In this video, we're going to replace the top end on a GY6 engine. About 90% of all the GY6 engines are going to be just like this that we're going to do. We're going to remove the tires, the fenders, and for our convenience for video, and we're going to remove the seats out of the cart. At this point, we're going to go ahead and remove the battery, the cables from it. We're going to remove the plastics from around the cylinder and head. We're going to remove the exhaust the electrical box and we're going to go ahead and remove the air box more for our convenience again for videoing. Now what we like to do on our engines we like to check and make sure that we're in time with our dots running flush with the head so that we've reset it or preset it for uh, tearing down. We're going to remove our head bolt studs, our cam chain tensioner and the nuts on the rocker arm assembly. Now when removing the rocker arm assembly, you're going to have dowel pins, so you have to wiggle a little bit to get it off. Inspect your little plates and pins for wear. And you're going to rock your cam at an angle to lightly pull your chain off. Inspect your cam lobes and your bearings on your cams for wear again. Any pitting, any wear, flats, rough areas. You want to just slightly slide the head forward. You're going to look at the base of the head for any warpage or leakage from the head gasket. We all look good here. Then the same thing on the cylinder. Looking for wear in the cylinder, looking for galding. This engine was smoking badly. I believe it just had worn rings, but we want to make sure that we have no galding on the cylinder walls or the piston skirt. And to remove the piston, we have circlips that are inside the wrist pin hole. Going to use a little hook or screwdriver or a little pair of needle nose pliers just to pull them out. We're going to lightly tap the wrist pin out. We're going to inspect our wrist pin as well as our rod for galding or wear. Make sure we weren't run low on oil. There's your galding on your piston. That's what we expected this engine to have. And the rings are stuck on the piston as well. Now for this rebuild, we've chosen the ultimate rebuild kit from Go Power Sports. It comes with your base gasket, your head gasket, your time and chain gasket, pistons, rings, cylinder, and new head wrist pin and clips. We've also purchased an exhaust gasket to go with it and we're going to show you how to install this. What we done first was remove our studs from our old head. Exhaust studs are on your short side of course with your smaller valve. Long studs go on the intake side. You're going to screw them in with a pair of pliers and just snug them up good. On our ring set you have letters or numbers on your top edge that's going to go to the top of the piston. And as you can see, we have a chrome ring and then just a steel ring. Your chrome ring is your top ring. The steel is the second. The chrome dissipates the heat better. Now we're going to show you, before installing these on your piston, we want to check it in the cylinder to be sure that they have the correct rings for your cylinder and piston. You should have somewhere between four and seven thousandths gap. Yeah. We use a feeler gauge to check it with. This one has a tight six, so it's perfect. Now that Scott's got the bottom ring on his oil ring, he's gonna spin it and make sure everything's clear and free on it. He's gonna install the second ring, 
Again, letter or number up. Again, he's going to spin it, squeeze it together, and make sure it's free, not hanging up with any burrs anywhere. And we're going to repeat that on the top ring. Now we're ready to oil the skirt of the piston, the cylinder, and the wrist pin. He's spinning those rings to make sure he's getting oil down under him. So when he first starts his engine, it has lubrication already on him. Now on your setting of your rings, he's going to put the bottom ring and the top ring, one of them at 2 o'clock and one of them at 10 o'clock. It doesn't really matter which way you go. And then we're going to slide it into the cylinder. The top side of the piston has an N written on it. That's going to go up in your cylinder towards the timing chain tensioner. Scott's going to install a clip in his wrist pin hole so that one's already locked in place, firmly locked in, so when he slides it across the rod he only has to install the outside one. He's spinning it to make sure he's locked in. Now he's going to reset his rings at 10 and 2 o'clock. And you can just lightly tilt and push in on these rings with your taper on the new cylinders. And lightly just tap them down into the hole. Okay, once you're to that point, he's going to take this base gasket and install on the block of the engine. Now we've already cleaned our block surface. Scott's reinstalling the dowel pins. There's two that go between the cylinder and the block. And we've shot our gasket with high tack. And then we're going to oil our wrist pin. Lightly slide your gasket and make sure it's tacked down to the cylinder block. We're going to bring our cylinder and piston set up, up. and installing it, we're going to bring it right down to the rod level and slide our wrist pin through the rod. And we're going to install our other wrist pin clip. Again, spin the clip to be sure it's locked in the groove. And 
that Scott is going to pull his timing chain up through the cylinder. We use a magnet to do this in our shop. You can use a screwdriver, a hook, a piece of wire, whatever you choose to use. He's lightly going to work his cylinder down over the piston. Now that we have the cylinder on, we're going to put in the timing chain guide, the gasket, well the dowel pins and the gasket. Again, you have two dowel pins between the cylinder and the head. Installing the timing chain guide, you're going to slide it down through the slot of the cylinder and the two little dowel pins in it slide into the cylinder base. Scott's going to lay this chain back down and install the head gasket now. We have also sprayed the head gasket with high tack. You're ready to slide your head on. The intake side, of course, is up with the long studs. And Scott's going to use his magnet again to grab your timing chain and hold it up in place. Most all these engines time where there's no real mark for it. What we've found is the second timing mark on your flywheel lines up with the center of your pickup coil bolt right here. Or as Scott's showing you up front, you can put your screwdriver in your piston hole and feel it till the piston's on top dead center. That's what 90% of people do. Then we'll show you how to time your cam with that. Once again, we're going to install the cam. We're going to oil it. We're going to oil our lobes, oil our journals, and oil the bearing. The big hole in the cam gear is going to go forward towards the steering wheel and the two smaller holes you're going to line up with the flush it with the sides of the head. You're going to put your cam at a slight angle to roll it under the timing chain. Then you're going to push your cam back into place. And what I like to do, I like to see if my two marks are flush with the head. Go back around and check your top on your piston so you're not going to bend the valve when you start it up. Now you're going to install your rocker arm assembly. We've got two dowel pins that go between it and the assembly. On your assembly, exhaust is marked, clearly marked. It does go down to the exhaust side. On your timing marks, your top one is going to slightly be protruding past the head because of your tensioner's not in yet. That's fine. Now Scott's going to show you on a washer, on your rocker arm washer, if you'll feel that washer, you have a true flat side and a, a tapered side. Flat side goes towards the rocker arm. That allows you to snug it up without binding. We're going to start our nuts on here and just lightly snug them down and then we're going to go around and check the timing before we check anything else on this or tighten any more. In tightening up the rocker arms you're going to want to crisscross your pattern and just slowly bring them back down. When you get them snugged up you'll give it a pretty good little snug on that 3 8 ratchet. There's no book for the rocker arm assembly. A lot of people like to use 8 to 12 foot pounds. Once those are installed, you're going to put in your two side bolts.
going to lightly snug them up with the six mil bolts. You're only going to want to go three or four foot pounds on them at best. I'm going to install the time and chain tensioner. You can preload this tensioner by taking it apart, but you have to have a special tool. And you're going to find that on the 150, it extends all the way out once it's installed anyway. So we just hold them down and reinstall them. We have checked it to make sure there wasn't no free play in it. So we know it's a good tensioner. Now before setting our valves, we're going to go around and check our timing again. We're going to check our marks on our head to the cam. And we're going to go recheck our timing marks on the opposite side. Just like we've shown you before, the second mark to the back bolt or the screwdriver with the top dead of the piston. Now that we've rechecked our timing, we're going to go ahead and adjust the valves. We have a 9mm jam nut and a square headed bolt in it. You can adjust this by breaking the jam nut loose, turning your bolt in until it just snug on your feeler gauge, and then when you tighten up your nut, it's going to pull it a hair bit looser, so you'll... And both exhaust and intake set at four thousandths. You want your feeler gauge to freely move through it, not be tight on it. Now that we've adjusted our valves, we're going to turn our engine over by hand. You can grab the uh, fan on your flywheel to do this with. We just want to ensure ourselves nothing's in out of sync or going to bind up on us. Spin it several times and then we're ready to reinstall. We'll put our valve cover on, our plastics, exhaust, carburetor, and air tank, and we'll be ready to start this engine.